On the seventh day of October, Halloween gave to me seven silent heroes, six prequel bloodstones, five diabolical fledglings, four vampire pianists, three dead professors, two Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, welcome to the end of our first week of the 31 Days of Halloween. That's right, it is October 7th, and I hope, first of all, that you're enjoying your Saturday. It's a, a beautiful weekend here at uh, Dark Parade HQ, 31 Days of Halloween HQ, and I am excited to be talking to you about a movie that is not a subspecies movie. That's right, we uh, are putting the Bloodstone and shit vampires behind us, and we are looking ahead. And by ahead, I mean sort of a retro sci-fi horror film called No One Will Save You. Uh, this premiered on Hulu and got a little bit of buzz because it was one of those movies where every now and again, Stephen King just comes out of the woodwork and is like, boy, this is a great movie. Uh, that's a terrible Stephen King impression, but I'm sticking with it. And he said... <laughs> Not since a Twilight Zone episode has there been anything quite so scary. And I know scary, because I'm Stephen King. <laughs> or something. And uh, I'll, I will say this. I don't always agree with Stephen King, but this movie is notable. It uh, dropped on Hulu, and it is, uh, it's kind of a gimmick film in that... Nobody in the movie really talks. And there's a little bit of background dialogue. And it, it's not like everyone is silent or that people are mute in this film or anything. It is just told from the point of view of a woman who has a high degree of anxiety. She has a, a sort of a PTSD from this emotional trauma from her childhood. And she doesn't really relate to people very well and tends to stay on her own, her job. Uh, she lives in a house kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and her job is making uh, dresses or tailoring dresses that she sends via mail. So all of her business is transacted through packages. She doesn't really talk to the mailman, uh, although she sees him every day. She's got a guy that she's apparently got a crush on, but it's not clear that... She's ever spoken to him. She just kind of drives by and waves and he looks at her like she's a weirdo, which she kind of is. And then she goes and hangs out at like her mother's grave and occasionally the grave of a friend of hers. And, you know, that's pretty much her life. And she drinks wine by herself and teaches herself how to dance. And all of it is done very solipsistically. She, is, she does not engage with people she doesn't speak with people and that's largely the point of the movie is how removed she is from humanity and not not just physically although that's true too she lives alone and and there is not another house around her for uh, at least some distance not miles and miles but enough that it's a journey to get somewhere and there's that physical distance, but there's also the emotional dis distance, and she's she's kind of closed off. And one night, something breaks into her house. And by something, I mean an alien. It's very clearly an alien. The movie doesn't dance around the idea that it's an alien. It's an alien. And the alien breaks into her house, and as it terrorizes her, she ends up killing it. And then things go buck wild. She starts to realize that, oh, she was not the only person visited by an alien, and those aliens seem uh, to have done something to control some portion of the population. And what happens in the movie is this is sort of an alien invasion movie from a very singular perspective with very little uh, in the way of, like, grand scale... Like, you know, here's what's happening in Washington. Like, like this is an Independence Day. This is much more uh, a story of one person having a very, uh, a, a very personal and very 
desperate struggle against these forces that uh, are, are coming after her. And the thing that Stephen King was referencing, there's an old Twilight Zone episode, and I should have looked up the name of it, and I don't remember, but you can find it easily enough, where it's a woman being terrorized by this little robot that is chasing her all around her house. And she's an older woman, and she's fighting off with a broom, and it, this little tiny Robbie the robot just won't give up and keeps shocking her and things. It's been years since I've seen it, so I might be misremembering some of what the threat was. And there's a twist ending in the episode where you learn that, oh, this little robot is actually a probe made by the United States to drop onto other worlds and have it explore, and it's designed to deal with threats and things like that. And uh, it, it's an interesting episode. It's a pretty good episode of Twilight Zone, and I, I recommend it if you haven't seen it, even if you know what the twist is, because I callously gave it away. It's still worth seeing. It's still a really interesting episode of television. And the comparison here is pretty clear, which is a silent protagonist. And that episode also, that episode of Twilight Zone, I don't believe has any dialogue in it either. Uh, I know that it doesn't for the bulk of it, but it might be framed by that or something uh, here or there. Much like this movie, it's not entirely without dialogue, but mostly. And Caitlin Dever plays the woman in question, a young woman who uh, is at the center of all of this. And Caitlin Dever, by the way, I dearly love. Caitlin Dever first came to attention for me when she was in Justified, where she played the daughter of kind of a shit heel uh, drug dealer that gets murdered and she ends up being uh, adopted by Mags Bennett who is this matriarchal ruler of uh, this county and, it, and its supply of weed and Raylan Givens knows her. Like, it, that season of Justified is the best season of Justified. She is incredible in it. Uh, and she went on to be in, like, Book Smart and a number of other things. She's one of those actors who is just going to be the real deal. She's a very good actor. She's going to be around forever. Caitlin Dever, if you if you haven't experienced Caitlin Dever yet, she's great in this and you ought to watch this. And and slight spoilers, you ought to watch this. Uh, no one will save you as good. And after she kills this alien, then things really become unhinged. And she is beset by even more aliens. And the thing that's interesting about the movie, one of the things that's interesting about the movie, is that you you know as much as she does. And so when she sees aliens that are slightly different than the other aliens that she's encountered, you're like, oh, okay, so there's a different kind of alien. Oh, and the, here's a big alien. And here's this weird communication thing that they do that I can't possibly understand what they're saying, but I sort of understand that it is a language and what their intent might be, at least. And so there, that all that stuff is really, really interesting. Seeing her use her wits to try to stop this invasion that is clearly way above her pay grade. And uh, it, that stuff is really fun. Like, she's fighting people with a mop and using, you know, a, a fireplace lighter to set a fire to kill this one thing. I mean, it's just all really inventive for the most part and really interesting and, and kind of inexplicable sometimes. Like, you don't entirely know the the source of the invasion. Why are they invading? Is it just because they're malevolent? Um, you know, we, we don't know exactly what's going on. Or if she is the cause of it. Like, did the fact that she, you know, jammed this alien in the head, is that what set everything off? We don't know that for sure. Maybe that's certainly a possibility. But also, it seems like the next day, the fact that other people have encountered this thing or these things, uh, suggest that no, she just happened to kill one of them. And it, and it goes places like this movie fucking goes places. Uh, I do think that the front half of it is more engaging than the back half. That being said, the very end of the movie, which I will certainly not spoil because like I said, this movie fucking goes places is open to interpretation. 
it is not 100% clear what is going on at the end of this movie. I have my interpretation of it. And if you want to message me privately and ask me, hey, uh, what, what do you think happened at the end of No One Will Save You? Find me on the Legion Podcast Discord. Send me a message. I will absolutely tell you what I think the end of this movie means. Um, without getting into specifics, there is some question of is she under the influence of the aliens? Is she not under the influence of the aliens at the end of this movie? If if not, then what does that say about her? But I think that's the point of the movie. Anyway, it's, it's really interesting. And it's interesting, I think, largely due to the writer and director, a, a guy named Brian Duffield. And for those of you who have been listening to me yap about movies for a while, you'll know... I love this guy, even though I wasn't 100% sure I love this guy until I looked at his filmography. He has written both of the Babysitter movies, one of which I really like, the other one I'm pretty lukewarm on. Uh, or actually, I think that one is just based on characters created by. He wrote Underwater, which I think is a really rad, e economical, fun, underwater horror movie, sci-fi horror movie. Uh, he wrote and directed Spontaneous, which was one of my favorites of 2020. I think Spontaneous is a great fucking movie. He also wrote Love and Monsters, which I also think is a really good movie. Uh, it, it's a little more slight, I think, than something like Spontaneous, but it's really good. And he's developing Skull Island. Uh, he's, he's the creator and I guess showrunner for that. But yeah, he's, he's a guy that has sort of made his bones for the past decade or so doing really interesting good work and as a result uh you know he gets to write and direct something like no one will save you which is very mainstream up to a point even with all the no dialogue stuff there is a point though in the movie where it makes a left turn into very surreal uh cerebral dreamlike stuff and that is the part of the movie that I like less than the mainstream stuff because I don't think it's communicated quite as well as I would like it to be. But I do think the very end of the movie, the, the, the ambiguity of that stuff allows you to reach an end, which I think is very good. And uh, No One Will Save You is a really solid sci-fi horror movie. If you haven't seen it, please do. It's on Hulu. It's... 93 minutes something like that one again i said it before when we were talking about the subspecies movies your horror movie should not be over 90 minutes unless you are a horror master like john carpenter or something like that otherwise you need to keep it tight and right at 90 minutes no more than 100 minutes you go over 100 minutes in a horror movie you better know what the fuck you're doing because otherwise you're gonna spin your wheels and i'm gonna lose interest but No One Will Save You is, uh, again, nice and tidy, uh, very interesting, um, great central performance from Caitlin Dever. There's a really nice emotional hook of you kind of learning throughout the film why she is so uh, isolated, why she is self-isolated, what the root of her anxiety is. All of that is really good and interesting. It's well-directed. The, the fact that you never quite know what's happening with the aliens like you can't quite pin it down i think makes it uh pretty scary because you're not sure what they're capable of and you're not sure what they're doing here and you're not sure exactly uh, you, not just what what is the end goal of all this but how are they going to go about it and what what happens it, like there's this weird communication between them that i really like um the one knock i really have against the movie other than the more esoteric stuff being a little head scratching at times in the third act. The other thing is there's some CGI that's not great. It's never terrible. It's not out and out terrible, but some of the stuff is better than others. There's some stuff that's like, Oh, aliens are real. And then there's some stuff that is a little obvious. And I wish it had been a little more practical, but also I don't know how you pull off practically some of the stuff that the movie does. But that also I think is the mother of ingenuity. I would, I would have liked it if the, uh, 
the edict was you cannot use CGI in this movie. I would like to see what that movie looked like because I think it might be slightly smaller in scope for a movie that's already fairly uh, isolated and 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 constricted in the story it's telling, but uh, it, and a little bit boxed in. But I would still like to see what that movie looked like. Um, that's a really minor complaint. You know, that I could say that about almost every movie these days. That, hey, I wish they used practical effects and not rely quite so heavily on CGI. So, yeah, it's really good. Stephen King was right. Hey, if you want to watch a really good movie, watch No One Will Save You, says Stephen King. I'm spooky. So... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephen King. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, it's almost like he's right here with you in spirit and 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 physically. Anyway, that's No One Will Save You. It's a good movie. I, You know, right off the bat, jumping out the subspecies movies and watching like an honest-to-goodness, regular schmegular good horror movie, I was like, oh, right, okay, yes. This is what a, a real movie looks like and what it feels like. And not just drooling shit vampires even though i enjoy that going to no one will save you was a really nice palate cleanser and really reset the table as far as like oh yeah you know this is a great movie and, and something i can really get behind so yes definitely check out no one will save you and also check out tomorrow's episode when we're talking about oops i almost let it slip no tomorrow we are going to do another one-off and it is going to be uh, a, a movie that I'm very interested in seeing and uh, from this year. We'll talk about it then. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you're having a wonderful Halloween season. I hope the first week of October has treated you well. Thank you for joining me with all the subspecies stuff. And uh, onwards and upwards. Have a great spooky time. I'll see you tomorrow for another edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Stephen King. <laughs> Bye.